anything uh, stand out to you watching it back this morning that uh, did last night? Um, I mean, there was some miscommunications in transition that, you know, we were trying to get to our man instead of just finding a guy and then figuring it out later on in the possession. Um, and then I, you know, there were some rotations that were a miss on the backside. They had 39 attempts. I, I think their goal is to get, you know, well over 40, close to 50. Um, but some we can certainly take out just with transition defense and then just the ability to guard the ball and not have to, to help um, is something that's hard against them, but we feel like we can do a, a better job. Is it just that balance overall of just everything that comes together with what they're trying to do with the switches and then penetrating to help the on ball and the whole package? Really? I, well, I mean, Luca's a guy that can draw attention anyway. He's so doggone big and he, you know, his arms are longer than you realize. And so even when you're you're going to help, he can pass over top of the help on point, on time, um, right in the shot pocket. Um, and then, you know, Brunson has the ability to get to the paint. And Cleaver's, you know, he's a different big in that he can, you know, run off three or four in a row. And it, it naturally pulls your bigs away, but the natural bent of any seven footer is to want to protect the paint. So if we can stay out of those rotations and guard the ball a lot better. And then there were times where we did guard the ball, we just reached and fouled, which, you know, you don't have to do. So it's hard. It's easier said than done when you're playing against three guys like that, that can get to the paint and cause you to double or rotate. It's, it's a tough task. You guys were able to, you guys were able to go the offensive glasses. Yeah. Is that something with the pace Dallas plays out where you feel like you can advantage here for you guys to send a guy or two every now and then? Well, I mean, we've tried to do it all year long. Um, last night was one of the rare occasions where we win, won the rebound game, and a lot of it was due to offensive rebounding. Mikel had some some good ones where he would go baseline and cut through the free, free throw line, and he could make the read whether or not he was going to be able to get the ball. Um, it is certainly something we, we want to do, but we don't want to do it to our own detriment and transition. That, that's the somewhat of the give and take with that, that kind of play. But if we can, it certainly helps you. You know, we, we were plus on the possessions last night, and, and that was a huge reason why. Yeah. But when you're looking at like switching and how much film were you did you show of what it works? Yeah, I don't know the ratio, but we showed both. There were times where we we did a, a decent job and they just made a tough shot. And then there were times where the intention was there, we just made the wrong rotation and gave up an open shot. But we try to show both. I think they're you know, whatever you want to deem it good and bad, it, it, you can learn from all of it. I think the initial, for us anyway, the initial presentation to the ball and the ability to try to guard it for at least two or three dribbles without having the help allows for our bigs to kind of navigate what's going on. Sometimes when it's a, a direct blow by, the natural bent of a big is to go and help. And then if you have a guy like Cleaver in the game, you're, you're in rotations. So late in the game, like Brunson was being a pest, like you know, leaving him out, yeah. trying to get around. Yeah. Uh, was that a matter of him? Basically, because the eye, the eye, the eye is going. That guy six months. Maybe he gave him good Yeah, but it, it, you know, the thing that people don't understand is you have to read the game too, and most guys do that to agitate you and then you react with a strong move and they flop and now you're hit with a foul. And so I think all bigs are aware of that. And then when there's a smaller guy on DA, it's not like those are the only two that know that. You know, everybody in the gym knows it. And so what people can't see is like, you're trying to make that pass, but there's a weak side defender right behind it that everybody's not looking at. They're just looking at DA with a smaller guy typically they know it as well. And there's a weak side defender like standing there waiting for you to make that pass. 
A lot of the guys kind of seem lack of a better term annoyed by the way that Sure. The majority of the game goes out like that. Is that the type of thing that we just need to take, kind of take that into the game as far as like a fire sort of thing? I, mean, I, I think possibly. <laughs> um, one thing you can't lose sight of is that you want a playoff game. But there's there's a certain way that we like to play, and, and we felt like we had decent control of the game. When I went back and, and we went back and looked at the film, we missed a number of bunnies around the basket. We missed a few open shots. And then the transition defense component kind of added to that. But to your point, I think that that funky feeling that we had at the end, you know, could generate a bit of Let's get back out there because it, we don't feel like we lost, but we certainly didn't feel like we finished the way that we should have. Philosophically coming into the series. Say that again. Philosophically coming into the series, are you guys trying to avoid switching as much as possible or is that something you're willing to go through? Like, how did you kind of navigate that? Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to avoid it. Um, in a perfect world, you don't necessarily want to get into the, the switching with a big on to guys who can put the ball down. Um, it's not a perfect scenario, but we're not afraid of it just because we feel like our bigs are athletic enough to contest shots without fouling. Um, I think the early switches for any NBA team is something you try to avoid. If it's a late clock situation, it's, it, it's probably a better place for you to be in. Is it Utah or is it, why do you think Dallas is so successful as kind of over the years we've seen them? Almost forced teams to play that way. Why are they so good at forcing? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you're giving me a lot of credit. I mean, they one, they have one of the best point guards of all time that probably knows more about that position and how to manipulate switches than anybody. And then they have three guys that force you, you know, with their ability to get down the lane. Sometimes you end up in a, a late situation. But I, I I think they do a really good job of getting the matchup that they feel like they want. Um, most teams do that. That's not something that's new to the NBA. Money, to your point, uh, it seemed like Cam and Chris were the two guys they were looking at. You guys just have good defenders. Like, like Cam and Chris are very good defenders. So how have you seen them step up and just all the guys in the team kind of step up and almost yeah. take it personally when they're, when they're that guy? I think that's something that every NBA player um, – relishes you know when you feel like the team is going at you like that you you want to prove them wrong um i thought we did a decent job there were times where we reached when we had them in a decent spot to shoot a tough two where we didn't need to but we don't we don't feel like we have any weak defenders on our team they may teams may choose to put a certain guy in a a play but we're pretty confident with not just the guys on the ball, but the defense around it, I think is probably just as important. Um, but they have guys that can break you down for sure. I mean, they they did it to Utah for a whole series, and that's something that they're really good at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Mikhail had his his fourth, so that was mostly the the reason why. Like that's one of those situations where if you can avoid one of your main high minute guys from getting a, a fourth or fifth foul, you just try. Um, when we looked at it, it, it you know, it could have gone either way. You know, I got to be careful what I even say. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Uh, that's it. I'm done. Is that right? Yeah, you can tell yeah, right here. It's, I didn't have this, but. Coming down the escalator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, didn't even know it. You know, I'm so locked in on when it comes to the Suns, just doing my job. And my family's been here for 
three years now and, and just been so blessed to live in this city, the school systems my kids are in, the memories they've made in such a short period of time. And, and the basketball part has been uh, pretty cool. So I had no clue I was, <laughs> that we've been here that long. And uh, we do feel like we're uh, Valley residents now, even though I'll go back to Texas in the summertime to fish and goof around with my deer. Uh, this this is my home, and um, I'm I'm glad to call the valley my my place of residence. But I had no clue; uh, just wasn't thinking that way. Huh? Nah, I just I, I like I told you guys before. I prayed about it. It was the only place that I had peace about coming. Um, Robert and James made me an unreal offer to come here and, and partner with them. And, and um, I think it was solidified with the conversations I had with the players that I talked to that week and um, the organization just putting their arms around me and, and, and that kind of thing. And then just, you know, the church I found, the neighborhood I live in, like everybody's been like really welcoming. And I don't mean that in like a generic way, like everybody says that it was, it was a true, like, we're so happy you're here. And um, at the time, <laughs> we were not in a great place from a record standpoint, but I, I really felt like because of the people that were here, uh, we had a shot uh, because we had good folks here that, that really wanted to win and they were willing to do whatever it took to give us a chance to be successful. And, that, and I don't mean that from a just an organization standpoint, the city. Um, and then you saw it kind of coming together in the bubble. You know, when the guys created that excitement when we came back home. It was pretty cool to see this community say, this is a team we can put our arms around. So that, that's been pretty cool for me. I was thinking about this opportunity, this opportunity period. I, you know what? I didn't know if I was going to get a chance. I, I don't think you can do that. You know what I mean? You hope, but you, you don't know. And for me, it's always been like, I, I don't want to hope somebody else gets fired so I can get a job. That's, I just I don't do that. You know what I mean? So I was trying to be the best assistant. You know, I, I dabbled in management. So I was like, you know, <laughs> maybe a scout for the rest of my life, you know, I, and I was having a ball. I was traveling all over the country. I was going to Eurobasket and going to practices and learning all kinds of stuff, different ways to coach, new drills, uh, different methods. Had no idea that I would end up in Phoenix because, in my opinion, I think you just do the best job where you are. And, um, I was blessed to be able to be in management and then become an assistant. And then when the opportunity came, I was like, okay, this is something that I can now look forward to. Say that again. If I don't have to wear a suit and tie again for the rest of my life, except for my kids' weddings and graduations, I'll be fine. This, well, you can answer this or let me know, but um, as you guys get to turn to the playoffs, just do you feel a sense of energy, like the crowd just getting more and more into it as you guys get deeper into it? I think so. Um, when I come out, you know, I come through the tunnel, I can get a, a sense of the electricity in the arena, and it seems to, like, heighten every game. Um and it's probably for me the only place where I do feel it because I'm in a bit of a triangle during the day where I just, you know, from here, home, church, and that's about it. My kids games. So that's not a triangle. It's actually a square. But when I come out for the game, I, I feel it. And then after the anthem, um, it's a pretty cool thing. And, and now we're starting to hear other players talk about um, how loud it is from an opponent standpoint. So th this place has become even more special than it was when it was, you know, Nash and Stoudemire and pick and roll. Um, it's even louder. And I, I thought back then it was nuts, but now it's getting to a place where it really is a cool sixth man. All right. Thank you.